A few mornings ago, I was down here sweeping around the sala, looking out across the valley. And it was a very pretty scene, very peaceful, very green, much greener than it usually is this time of the year. But then there was the sound of the artillery shells off in the distance, again and again and again. As a reminder that the human world can be a very beautiful place, but sometimes its beauty can disguise a lot of danger, a lot of defilement, which means that we have to be heedful. I was reminded of a book I read one time, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann, in what is probably the climactic scene in the novel, one of the characters has decided to go on a cross-country skiing, skiing hike, and he gets swallowed up in a storm and just barely makes it to one of those little cabins they have in the Swiss Alps for people who might be stranded like that. There was food, firewood, matches, blankets. He was able to get out of the storm, take, take some food, light a fire, and lie down. In a very vivid dream, he was in a bucolic scene, somewhat like ancient Greece, walking through fields. And the peasants in the fields seemed very happy with their work. And they kept motioning to this temple on a hillside at the end of the valley where their, their fields were located. And so he finally made it to the temple and went inside. And these old women were sacrificing babies and bathed in blood. Again, a bucolic scene, very pleasant, very peaceful, but hiding who knows what. Some pretty dark things. So as we're sitting here meditating in a quiet spot, we have to keep reminding ourselves that the world is a dangerous place. We have to use our opportunity to meditate, to practice the Dharma in all ways, in terms of generosity, virtue, concentration, discernment. As protection, both from ourselves and from the dangers outside. As the Buddha says, the real dangers outside are not so much what people can do to us, they're what other people can get us to do. They can get us to break the precepts, they can get us to give in to passion, aversion, and delusion. telling us that greed is good, anger is good. All kinds of horrible things they can say are good. And if we believe them and act on those beliefs, that becomes our karma, and that's the danger. So we have to look into our own minds. Where are we susceptible to these kinds of messages, and we've got to learn how to see through them, no matter who tells them, no matter how many people tell us, no matter how many times they tell us, we have to hold firm. Because who else can protect us? As the Buddha said, the self is its own mainstay. Who else could your mainstay be? We've depended on people who love us, to shelter us, to bring us into this world. But their love and protection can extend only so far. And if from that point on, we have to learn how to depend on ourselves. And basically become adults. Think of all the religions in the world. The Buddha's teachings are the one that is designed for adults. Others teach dependence on this power or that power, this outside being that's going to help you, and encouraging a kind of childlike devotion. Or as when the Buddha was teaching his son again and again and again, it was how to be an adult. 
his lessons when Rahula was seven. Take responsibility for your actions. Stop and think. When you do something, what are going to be the consequences? And if you foresee any negative consequences, i.e. any harm for yourself or others, you don't do it. The Buddha is teaching Rahula to be an adult, to take responsibility for what he's doing, take responsibility for the results of his actions. And notice the Buddha has Rahula judge his actions both on the motivation and on the results. In the West, our discussions of ethics tend to switch back and forth. Should a person be judged? by his or her motivation for acting, or should the person be judged by the results of the action? Because they're trying to come to a determination of how much guilt you might incur through an action that's not quite skillful. Pass judgment and then stop. Whereas the Buddha is teaching you a skill, and when you are learning a skill, how to be skillful in your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, both the motivation and the results are relevant, because you can learn from them. So the Buddha's teaching Rahula to be honest, to have integrity, to have compassion, to show restraint. All the signs of a good, healthy ego, all the signs of a good, healthy adult. And another time when he taught Rahula meditation, he started out by saying, make your mind like earth. Disgusting things get thrown in the earth, but the earth doesn't react. And he didn't say it, but he implied it. Pleasant things get poured on the earth, like perfume, and the earth doesn't react either. That quick reactivity to our likes and dislikes it's part of being a child. And the Buddha is saying, show some restraint. Not only outside restraint, but restrain your mind inside. This is especially necessary as you meditate, because you're going to find negative things coming up in the meditation. And if you let yourself get blown away by them, or brought under their influence, the meditation doesn't go very far. And sometimes it's a thought that the Buddha is teaching non-reactivity so that we can also be non-judgmental, not pass judgment on things. Actually, he's teaching non-reactivity so you can become a better judge of what should and shouldn't be done. Or when you're faced with a certain situation, what would be the best thing to do? Not just go on your impulses, not just go on your emotions. So again and again he kept teaching Rahula, even when Rahula was young, to be an adult. Our problem is that sometimes we're adults and yet we're acting like children. So it's good to remind ourselves the Buddha is teaching us to be self-reliant, to be mature. This is why we train the mind. Society likes to keep adults like children. They give you flashy things, or, or dangle flashy things in front of you, saying, if you want this, well, do what we tell you. And they don't care whether you're really an adult or not. But advertising, the politicians, the people who run the media, they want to keep you like children. And the sad thing is I've been to Dharma centers where they feel that keeping you like a child is not enough. They want to keep you like an infant. Where everything gets watered down so that you don't feel too challenged, you don't feel that you're being judged, you don't feel like anybody's going to say anything negative about you. 
They're creating kind of a child's world, an infant's world. And then tell you that that's, that's the drama. Like those little pictures you see in China, especially Taiwan, where monks are portrayed as little tiny baby monks. And the people putting food in the monks' bowls are little tiny children as if the Buddhist teachings were for children. In fact, in the past, starting around the time of the Song Dynasty, that was the attitude. Buddhism was for weak-minded women and for children. They thought this fairy tale world in which good intentions lead to happiness and bad intentions lead to harm. But that's not the way of the real world. That's, that's what they said. They got it all backwards. The real world, where people get ahead by doing harmful things. They're the children, and they're the ones who cause a lot of damage. Whereas the people who take responsibility for their actions, they're the adults. They're the ones that provide protection. As the Buddha said, when trouble comes into the world, it's because of fools. He compared it to a house on fire. Once one house is on fire, then it can set fire to the houses around it. So you want to make sure that you don't pick up fire from other people, and you don't start it within yourself. To learn to be responsible. You might say, well, I'm already very responsible. But there's still a lot within the mind where we tend to indulge in your defilements. With the attitude, well, a little indulgence here and there doesn't matter. That attitude, it doesn't matter. That's a child's attitude. That's what we've got to learn to grow out of.